So this is going to be an Oracle four card you pick with Diet Cross finish for each of the four uh, cards. Okay. Hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. So we're going to have four card oracle. These will be yes or no, or perhaps maybe, uh, answers for these four cards. You can choose one, two, three, or four, a couple of them, three of them, or all of them, or none of them. Just wait and see how they come out and see if they apply to someone that's important to you or even to yourself. So here we go. You know, as I've, you've heard me say before, for me, this is like looking out the window to see what the weather's like and what you're going to put on today. This kind of gives you a little preparation for uh, maybe what you're going to deal with today or... Um, you know, it's something along those lines. It's a good time right now to take a, a minute, take a beat, to just calm yourself down, which I need to do, and uh, collect yourself. Think about what's important to you. Uh, maybe take a few deep breaths. Maybe take a minute right now to get a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, glass of water, whatever, you know, gets you through. And, uh, and then we'll get into the reading. So this is the Good Tarot by Colette Baron reed uh, These are great cards. They come in a really nice box. It's kind of substantial. The guidebook that comes with them is useful. Um, it's it's it talks about all the cards. It's got some good ideas for divination, and it's easy to read. So that I like. The cards themselves are nice cards. I mean, they're they're um, they're sturdy. They've got a beautiful back. They're a little glossy. They're kind of biggish, but not um, difficult to use, at least not for me. And uh, you can see, again, the art on these cards just goes from, from right to the edge of the card. And there's lots of beautiful stuff here to see. So I do this to kind of mix the cards without damaging them and to give you an opportunity to look at them if you don't look at cards uh, very much. Um, you know, not everybody goes out and buys uh, tarot cards or has a chance to flip through the deck. So that's kind of uh, a little preview of what's in these cards. These are the Taracho, uh, not Taracho. These are, as a matter of fact, who puts these out? I have forgotten completely. So, don't know. Hay House. So not a, a brand that I see very often, but uh, nice cards and I really love using them. Okay, so this is going to be a four card you pick with Diet Across finish for each of those four cards. Oh, these are kind of messed up. Let me get these cards straightened out because as you may know, if you watch me, I'm not crazy about inverted cards. And it looks like I've got a few here. You'd think I would do this before I started filming, wouldn't you? But, nope. So, uh, well, at least this way you'll get a uh, another uh, little uh, look at the cards, won't you? So we'll take a minute, if you don't mind. And even if you do mind, to sort these out, make sure that they don't give me some trouble later. I know a lot of uh, tarot readers do read inverted cards. I, honestly, I'm just not comfortable with my uh, divination for inverted cards. And so rather than do that, I really try to make sure that I don't have them in the deck. And then if they do show up, then I, I just know that they really were supposed to be inverted and I give it my best shot. And uh, I just trust that the cards know, um, you know what they want me to say. So there we go. So now we'll go through this again. These cards are a little stiff. I think I'm going to get a little riffle shuffle just to see if I can get some air in there right off the bat. So what was I saying? Oh yeah, four card you pick. So, you know, this is a good time, like I said, to go ahead and get it, take a deep breath. Let's do it now. Let it out slow. You know, just doing that is a relaxing thing for me. I don't know. You might want to do it a few times. But, um, so take a deep breath, let it out slow, consider uh, what your questions are, um, and uh, you can pick one, two, three, or four cards, obviously. Um, we'll see how they come out. And I used to always have uh, two special numbers that I like to choose, and I always chose the same numbers all the time. 
And uh, my favorite uh, reader to do that with was actually uh, Mary Ann's Revealing Light Tarot. She doesn't do many um, you pick uh, cards anymore, but when she does, I really look forward to it. So here we go. We're going to take four cards right off the top for four card you pick. So this will be one, two, three, four. And you know, I'm going to take a minute to look at this camera and make sure it's filming. And yes, it is. Okay. Put these to the side for now while you decide which of these cards are good for you. Okay. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Remember, you can stop the tape and uh, you can get a beat on this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. And I'll tell you, I haven't used these cards in a little bit, it seems like to me. And so I hope my divinations aren't too rusty. In case they are, I've got the booklet out that I can look things up in. And I'm just not shy about doing that if I need to. Okay. So the first card, if that's the one you chose, this is going to be the Four of Air. So Air uh, is our swords. And the Four of Swords is typically talking about taking a rest, taking a break. And we can see that this uh, angel here is doing just that. She sat herself down in the cloud and it just has a little contemplation in her mind. So that uh, usually means that this is a good time to just give yourself the time to consider whatever it is that's going on. I like to say that this card is a maybe card. And I'm going to write that down so I remember because, as I have told you before, my memory is not the best. So maybe. That's what I'm doing off, off the camera here. So this is a maybe card for me. And so that diet across will help us uh, flesh that out. If you chose number two, then this card is the Queen of Water. So water or cups. Cups deal with passion, compassion, emotion, really deep felt feelings, okay? This isn't uh, something uh, tangible that you could lay on the table. This is something that's in your heart, in your head, in your mind, in the environment around you. And the Queen of Cups, the Queen of Water, is, and look at how contemplative she is. I really love that. Uh, is really, you know, in complete control of her emotions. As you can tell right here, she's taking this time to just say, yes, I'm very calm. I understand this passion. I understand this emotion that I'm having, and I want to just savor in it, or I want to think through it carefully. And this is a yes card. So if you chose number two, that's a yes card for you. Okay, the third card, if that's the one you chose, another uh, water sign, water card, cups, and this is the seven of cups. And uh, the seven of cups for me, oh gosh, now I forgot. Now I think it's emotion and um, and um, illusions. Yeah. So the seven of cups is illusion and delusion, and so we have that uh, right here in all the choices that this uh, this. Uh, fairy, I want to say, has to choose from. This is uh, the card that lets you take a minute to contemplate what's available to you, but the good thing about this card, and this is a yes card, is that you do have choices available to you to make this outcome. Don't worry about the choice that you make. Make a choice. Okay? That's a yes card. I'm going to jot that down, too. And then if you chose number four, it's this card right here, another swords. This is the two of swords, the two of air. And so this card right here tells you that there's choices to, there's, it's a, def, a definitive number of choices to make. Go this way, go that way. Swords, if they're for swords, I like to say are truth and justice. Air is something that we all have to have to uh, make life uh, possible for us. And so no matter which way you choose, whether you choose truth or justice or rules or law, which are some of the other things that swords can be, um, you're going to go with that choice and follow it down that road to its, uh, to its next conclusion. Okay, so the two of, of, of swords, and that's a yes card. Okay, so we've got the four of air as a maybe. We've got the queen of water as a yes. We've got the four of water, or sorry, the seven of water as a yes. And then the two of swords or air as a uh, yes. Nice cards to have today. I'm going to take those and leave them face up today. I do it differently every time. This will be the um, signifier for the uh, diet at cross that we're going to do right now. So this is number one. You chose that one, the Four of Air, the Four of Swords. You know, this is typically depicted in the Rider Waite deck as a, a sarcophagus with a, a, a knight laying on top of it or a soldier laying on top of it. It's got usually um, three swords uh, above pointed down that make it perilous if he gets up too soon, and usually one sword at his side, which you consider as his protection or his rule or his law or his justice. And so we're going to take five cards to finish off this diet at cross. right now. Okay, so one, two, three, 
four and five. And then I'm going to take these cards and really let them soak up all the energy that's over here for those divinations when we get to them. So we have five cards here. This is a signifier, the four of air, four swords. Uh, really take a minute to consider what, what, what it is that you're dealing with. The challenge to this, though, is the emperor. Beautiful card. I mean, look at these these cards. Anyway, the emperor is 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 completely in charge of the situation. And why that's a challenge is because that might make you feel as if um, as if you can you know you know what you're doing. You can move right ahead. Uh, you can just go ahead and make a choice. But I don't know if you've ever seen videos of these lions when they're when they're hunting when they're surveying their territory. They don't hurry. They take their time. They creep up to an issue, but then when they're ready, they pounce and they make something happen. And that's what this emperor is a choice, is a challenge to, that's why rather, this emperor is a challenge to uh, these four of swords, which are encouraging you to take a beat. Okay. Don't be tempted. Study the situation. The, um, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the old carpenter's rule, uh, measure twice and cut once. You're measuring twice to make sure you get it perfect. And then you cut once because once you've made the cut, there's no going back. The uh, base of this reading, then, is the three of earth, you know, earth or pentacles. And the three of pentacles, I always like to say, is putting something together for public display, okay? Well, we're usually working with a team. So we came into this understanding that uh, this was going to require some, uh, some cooperation somehow, okay? The past of this reading is the two of fire, you know, fire or wands. And the two of wands usually are indicative of short-term planning. You know, something that's going to happen that's going to move us on down the road, but there's something else we want to do later. And I love how this giraffe is just kind of hanging this lantern uh, off into the distance, not so much for himself, but for this uh, maiden who's riding him, or, or her, I suppose, to uh, to see where they're going and make a, a wise and choice about how they move forward. So the past of this reading is the two of wands, the two of fire, uh, short-term planning. The sky of this reading, then, is the Six of Air, the Six of Swords. You know, the Six of Swords are moving out of troubled water. You see this in the Rider Waite deck as a boat on a little bit of rough water with Six Swords in the bow. That's their truth, their justice, their protection, their rules, their law, and moving forward into something calmer. And that's what this is, the Six of Air, you know, sailing into something a bit calmer. And that's what we want to aim for, okay? Now, the likely outcome of this Diana Cross, then, the final card, is going to be this Five of Swords. And uh, the Five of Swords escapes me for a moment, so I'm not going to be shy about looking on my cheat sheet and to tell me that um, okay, to defending, retreating, defeat. Uh, oh, yeah. The Five of Swords is um, can be uh, an abuse of power in the typical Rider Waite deck. But remember, this is the good tarot. So this Five of Swords is telling us to, you know, be... Um, mindful of taking a wrong step, of making a hasty choice, of causing, um, you know, an unfair outcome. And uh, and so that just kind of reinforces the fact that we need to take a beat before we go much further. And that's a sword and that's a sword. So to tell you one more time, four of, four of air is, you know, sit down and take a minute to study your situation. Don't be tempted by the power of this emperor to move forward um, too quickly. Uh, the three of uh, pentacles is knowing that this is something that's going to be out there for people to judge. The two of fire, the two of wands, is knowing that this is just a short-term plan to get this moving down the road a bit. The six of air, the six of swords, is knowing that this is going to move something into a better place. And then the final outcome, this five of air, is just to be mindful that we don't take advantage of a situation or whether we're being taken advantage of in this situation. Okay? So that's what we got for this first uh, divination. So we're going to take these cards, put them back in the pack, and then move on to the second one, if that's what you chose, the Queen of Water or the Queen of Cups. That's a serene looking queen. She really, I mean, if I had come to this queen with a question and she closed her eyes and she went into this contemplation, I think, okay, I'm going to feel very comfortable with what I'm going to, uh, what advice I'm going to get here. So queen of a uh, water is a signifier for this uh, number two card, if that's the one that you chose. Okay. Now we're going to spread these out. Take five cards. One two, three, four, and five. Okay, here we go. Put this over here to work on the energy in those two cards before we jump into that. And then these 
five cards. I'm going to see what is the challenge to this Queen of Water completely in control of her emotions, as it shows us right there. Ah, this is the Hierophant. You know, the Hierophant is our rules, uh, laws. Um, it could even be the rules around the thing that you have to do, uh, the system around how your family works or how this maybe it's your job or uh, whatever the structure is around this issue that you're contemplating. Everything has a way that you have to go about it, doesn't it? If you get in your car, you know you have to sit down, put your foot on the brake before you get the thing started. You want to check your mirrors. You want to see if you're going to have to back up. You want to look at what the traffic is. There's always rules that we have to follow in anything that we're going to do here. So this Hierophant is telling us to be mindful of the, uh, the structure that's around this uh, situation that you're in. The base of this reading, Four of Cups, Four of Water. And um, the Four of Cups, again, I'm sorry that I'm a little forgetful today, but I've been, had kind of a, a crazy day. The Four of Cups are hmm, bored, lacking, uh, unmotivated, restless solitude. The Four of Cups, so this is a situation where we want to really think about what we're doing. It may mean that we're being made an offer of something that we don't particularly want, that we feel like, um, you know, I just don't want to make this decision right now. That's fine. Just take your time and study the situation before you completely uh, give up on it or pass it up. And um, so that could be uh, important for you right now. The past of this reading is then the, is this a not Yeah, this is the nine of pentacles, the nine of earth. The past of this is having been really flush with all the value that we needed to make this decision, okay? It's fruitful, it's uh, really empowered, and it's just knowing that, yeah, we came, we should be coming into this with the strength of, of knowing that what we need is there. Okay, now the uh, sky of this reading is the king of swords, the king of air. Just like I said, the strength of what we need is there. Uh, swords or air or truth, justice, rules, law. Um, and uh, this king of air is in complete control of the situation that he's about to uh, make a determination of. Okay, I want to keep him here, and I'd like to keep this wording right here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Love that. Now the... Um, final outcome for this then is the Ten of Earth. Again, lots of plenty. Ten of Pentacles is familial wealth, uh, lots of abundance, a lot of value that can be passed down, that can be shared, that can be used over and over and over again through the generations or at least through the whole uh, cycle of the issue that you're dealing with. Okay, so just to tell you again what we're dealing with here, we've got the signifier as the queen of water really being in control of her compassion, of her emotion, of her feelings. Uh, ruled by or challenged by the Hierophant, which are all the uh, structure around what has to be done to make this decision. Okay, the uh, four of water, the four of cups, is maybe having an offer of something that you don't particularly want or or maybe having to make an offer that you don't necessarily want to give up. But uh, the, again, this contemplation is what's going to carry you through that decision. The nine of earth is, is knowing, no, there's everything you need there to get through this. The king of air is the king of swords. Really feel like you're empowered to make this decision, but that doesn't mean you have to jump to it. And then the ten of earth is just a know that uh, the outcome of all this is shareable it's usable, it's uh, valuable, and this can make some, some a ripple of re, a repercussion down the road that are beneficial. Okay, so that's what we've got if you chose the number two card. I want to put these into here so they don't move away. We'll put these back inside this deck and we'll move on to number three if that's what you chose. And as we can see right there, that's the seven of water, and that's the signifier for this next uh, dietic cross we're going to deal with. Uh, seven of water are lots of choices, as you can see, flying in the sky above that, um, some sort of a sea creature, sea fairy. And uh, so the seven of water is knowing that there's lots of choices to make. Um, and what do you want to do when you got lots of choices? You want to consider them carefully. I do, anyway. So we're going to take five cards out of here. This is going to be one. This is going to be two. Then we have three, four, and finally five. Okay, this is going to go back over here to work on this last issue. And we're going to see what the challenge is to these, to all these choices, the Seven of Cups. And that will be, uh, ah, temptation. So this um, is typically depicted as the devil. And uh, let me see, 
my eyesight isn't the best today. So yeah, temptation can be love. It can just be something that um, uh, seems so valuable to us. It can be some luscious situation that we want to get a hold of. So temptation, the challenge to that choice is the temptation that's involved. Okay. So really, before you make that final uh, choice, before you take that bite, before you spend that money, before you commit yourself completely, Consider all the choices involved. And the, the base of this reading then is the six of earth. That's six, six of pentacles. And the pentacles tell us that, listen, there's a wealth here. There's a value uh, that we uh, are able to dole out, that we're able to share. And we came into this with that value. Okay, we came into this with um, that, whether you know it or not, honestly. And the past of this reading is the ace of fire. So this is the ace of wands. Wands are action, movement, uh, planning. And so uh, the past of this was perhaps a plan or some sort of an action that uh, brought us into this situation. The sky of this reading is the two of fire, the two of wands. I love it when the cards repeat. You know, we just had this in the last uh, diet at Cross. And again, so this uh, two of wands, this two of fire, is to, you know, know that this is a short-term plan to help us move forward uh, towards the um, eventual uh, outcome, the eventual goal. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing is going to be the star. Look at that. What a beautiful card to get. You know, the star is really the center of the universe. You know, it's the shining light. It's the spotlight on what uh, this issue is or what it can be or perhaps what, what you are. So just to talk about this issue one more time is the seven of waters, the seven of cups, lots of choices to, to, to choose from, lots of things to choose from, lots of ways to go about the situation. It's challenged by temptation. So make sure that before you jump towards that temptation that you consider all your choices. It's uh, centered by the six uh, of earth, the, the base of this reading is the six of earth, six of pentacles, you know, distributing that wealth, distributing that knowledge, distributing that value. Uh, the past of this is the ace of fire, the ace of wands. That's one great big wand of plan, of action, of moving forward. And up in the sky, this with this two of fire, this two of wands, is knowing that this is a short-term plan. This is something to get us moving along the way. And when we get to where we want to go, this can be a star. This can be a shining moment in, uh, in the decision uh, that you're making, in the outcome of what's going to happen here, and positive. Okay? So that's number three. Now, the final card, I chose number four, is that two of air as the signifier for this diet at cross. Put these right back in here so that we can make sure we have all the choices available to us that are possible. The two of air is making a choice. That's the two of swords. Truth, justice, rules, um, law. Could be medical even. But the two of air is uh, like two of swords making a choice. Listen, either choice is fine. Making the choice is what's important to do it. Okay, and don't be frozen in place uh, by indecision. So five cards right off the top here. That's one. This is going to be two. This is going to be three. This will be four. And then finally right here, it's going to be five. We're done with these cards. They've done what they need to do for us. So we'll give them a rest. These five cards are what are going to help us uh, understand this yes card, this two of air, two of swords. Okay, the challenge of that is the ten of fire. That's the ten of wands. And the ten of wands is is typically de depicted as uh, trying to move a bundle of wands up a hill or forward in a really uncomfortable way. And in the same uh, uh, light uh, is uh, that this uh, person has to make a choice of, of these burning issues around them, okay? You want to make sure that you Pluck one out of the air before it's completely burned up, and uh, and it's difficult to make that choice. So look at that. So difficult to make a choice, but you can do it. That's the challenge. It's a difficult choice, but it can be done. The base of this reading, then, is the Six of Water, the Six of Cups. And the Six of Cups is a lot of times, you know, wanting to see something the way it was before, wanting to go back in time, wanting a, a simpler uh, situation. And uh, so this Six of Water, this Six of, uh, is of Cups, is uh, understanding that we came into this with some kind of a longing for something past. The King of Earth is the King of Pentacles. This is really being in complete control, charge, and command of your value. Okay? And so we come into this decision. And in the sky of this reading is the Three of Water, the Three of Cups. And the Three of Cups are celebrations, quite frankly. Uh, this uh, mermaid, this sea creature, is balanced those three shell cups with three pearls. 
and perfectly. And so don't think that this isn't worth making that decision because it certainly is. And then the final outcome for this is this Eight of Air, this Eight of Swords. And even though this is a Yes card, this can feel like being trapped. But you have to always remember, just like this angel in this cloud, she may feel like she can't make a move, but all she has to do is stand up, spread her wings, catch a breeze, and she's off onto the next issue. And you can do the same. So don't let indecision uh, about the uh, choice that you have to make keep you suspended. You know, move forward. So make a choice. Consider it carefully. Understand uh, uh, that you come into this kind of wanting things to be the way they were, but we always are moving forward. We, it's inevitable. We can't not do that. The King of Earth tells us that we have come into this with the value that we need, uh, that uh, this can be a celebratory situation, and that the aid of air is to just um, take charge. If you have a, a trapped feeling, just take control of it. Pull yourself together, spread your wings, and jump off that cloud and move on forward as you're intended to do, okay? As we're all intended to do. So that's the situation today. Those were your cards. We had a nice four-card oracle reading. Okay, so that was the four card oracle. I hope some of that landed for you. Uh, if it didn't, let it rest. Maybe come back to it later on and see if it works for you. Uh, look at it tomorrow, perhaps. Maybe it applies to someone you know or someone you love or someone you're dealing with. And if none of that works, well, it just wasn't for you and that's perfectly fine. So at least hope you were entertained for a few minutes. Well, I'm Mark. This has been my journey through tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go. So stop on by. Ciao for now.